Hey everyone! So today I'm here to review the ColourPop Ultra Satin Lip Lipsticks. They individually retail for $6 US, they contain 0.11 ounces of product, and they are currently available in 16 permanent shades. They are said to be a lightweight, comfortable, long-wearing, bold lipstick with a satin finish. The packaging is a clear gloss style tube with a silver chrome cap, and they feature a standard doe foot applicator. They also have no noticeable scent or taste. The formula itself is a thin, mousse-like consistency that does feel comfortable and lightweight on the lips. They do dry down to a degree, but they remain satin on your lips, unlike your more typical matte liquid lipsticks. The color never clings or feels drying on lips, so it is a much more forgiving formula for those of you who have chapped or drier lips. The color itself doesn't grab onto or accentuate dryness or drier areas or any imperfections. The product can lightly transfer, especially once the product has first been applied. Since they do only set to a satin finish, and they do kind of have a slight tackiness to them when pressing your lips together. It's nothing that's overly noticeable or bothersome at all, like with more sticky lip glosses. Every time you press your lips together, you really notice that. With this type of satin liquid lipstick type formula, you really don't notice it at all. This is also a longer lasting formula, as they typically wear between 6 to 10 hours. Echo Park is a medium to dark muted peach beige with warm undertones and a satin finish. Due to the lighter nature of this particular shade, I did find that the color oh so slightly did fall into lip lines during wear. It wasn't really that noticeable, and regardless to that, it did apply smoothly, evenly, and it had rich, opaque pigmentation. Echo Park wore well for six and a half hours before fading. In comparison, ColourPop's Parker was darker, more pink, and creamy. ColourPop's Magic Wand was lighter and less pink. Max Velvet Teddy was warmer and creamy, and the Too Faced Melted Chocolate Milkshake was darker, more peach, and glossy. Frickin' Frack is medium to dark muted plum rose with warm undertones and a satin finish. This shade had rich, opaque pigmentation that applied very smoothly and evenly to lips. It also never felt drying or feathered, and the color didn't fall into lip lines. Overall, it was a great performing shade. Frickin' Frack wore well for 8 hours before fading. In comparison, ColourPop's Mosh Pit was lighter and glossy. Kat Von D's Lolita was lighter, muted, and more mauve. Kat Von D's Lolita was brighter and more terracotta, and Ofra's Mocha was similar. London Fog is a medium to dark muted cherry red with warm undertones and a satin finish. Despite this being a more bold shade, I had no troubles creating crisp, clean edges during application. It was surprisingly a very easy shade to work with. It had opaque, even pigmentation that applied very smoothly and never felt drying. London Fog lasted eight and a half hours and left behind a stain. In comparison, ColourPop's Jingle was warmer, more red, and glossy. Clinique's Cherry Pop was more of a true red and glossy. Ofra's Atlantic City was warmer and more orange toned. And Stila's Fiery was cooler and more of a true red. Lion King is a medium to dark muted raspberry with hints of pink, cool undertones, and a satin finish. It is also the shade I currently have on today. This shade applied smoothly, evenly, and had great opaque color payoff. Once again, it created clean edges very easily, and it didn't feather or feel drying over time. Lion King wore well for eight and a half hours and left behind a stain. In comparison, the Sephora collection to the rescue was lighter and more metallic. Bite Beauty's Aubergine was darker and more berry. ColourPop's Scrooge was lighter, warmer, and more pink. Max D for Danger was lighter, warmer, and more red, and Ofra's Santa Anna was warmer. Magic Wand is a light to medium peach beige with warm undertones and a satin finish. Once again, due to the lighter nature, I noticed that the color did lightly fall into lip lines, but it wore smoothly and evenly and had great pigmentation overall. I also found that this particular shade had a bit more slip to it during application, but it never caused the product to look uneven or streaky at all on the lips. Magic Wand lasted six hours before fading. In comparison, ColourPop's Echo Park was darker and more peach. Kat Von D's Bow and Arrow was cooler, more brown, and muted. Nude Stick's Whisper was lighter, less brown, and creamy. And Ofra's So Paulo was lighter and more nude. 
Marshmallow is a light to medium muted gray lavender with cool undertones and a satin finish. Unlike the other lighter shades in the collection, I didn't find that the color liked to gravitate or fall into lip lines during wear. It applied and wore evenly, had smooth coverage, and excellent opaque pigmentation. Marshmallow surprisingly lasted eight and a half hours before fading. In comparison, Bite Beauty's Lavender Thistle was warmer, more pink, and glossy. Kat Von D's Requiem was lighter and more pink. Kat Von D's Coven was brighter and more purple. And NYX's Playdate was warmer, more pink, and glossy. Mess Around is a medium to dark muted taupe brown with hints of gray, neutral undertones, and a satin finish. This shade applied smoothly, evenly, and had opaque pigmentation. I found that the consistency was thinner and more of a liquid than the rest of the shades, but this never affected the performance, application, or wear time at all. It did have quite a strong sheen for the first hour of wear, but it did dull down and become more of a satin like the rest of the shades. Mess Around wore well for eight hours before showing any major signs of wear. In comparison, ColourPop's Teeny Tiny was darker, more red, and muted. ColourPop's Tulips was darker and more berry. Kat Von D's Bow and Arrow was much lighter and warmer. And Max Stone was less gray and warmer. Panda is a medium to dark brightened berry with hints of purple, warm undertones, and a satin finish. While the shade did have great pigmentation, I noticed on a closer inspection it could lean more purple in some areas. But that kind of tends to happen with shades that are like this. It tends to be more fuchsia and more purple in certain areas. Regardless, it was still a very bold shade and it had even coverage on lips. The formula was also very easy to apply and didn't settle into lip lines or feather. Panda lasted eight and a half hours and left behind a stain. In comparison, ColourPop's Glitter was brighter, warmer, and more fuchsia. ColourPop's Plastics was similar but warmer. Max Instigator was darker and more maroon. And Ofra's New Orleans was cooler and more purple. Petite Four is a medium to dark muted steel blue with hints of gray, cool undertones, and a satin finish. I found the shade did have more of a noticeable sheen that did dull down when compared to the others, but it still applied very smoothly and evenly and had rich, opaque color payoff. And once again, it never felt drying or feathered. It was a very easy shade to wear, despite the color being more on the unique side. Petite Four lasted eight hours and left behind a faint stain. In comparison, J Cat's Splashed was warmer and more blue. Prim is a medium to dark muted burgundy red with warm undertones and a satin finish. This was the darkest shade out of the collection and it surprisingly had really good performance. It applied smoothly, evenly, and was very easy to create clean, crisp edges. The color payoff on this shade was very rich. It had great coverage and I didn't have any troubles with it bleeding or feathering. Prim wore well for eight and a half hours and left behind a stain. In comparison, Bite Beauty's Cognac was lighter and more brown. Kat Von D's Damned was darker and more burgundy. Max Antique Velvet was more brown and muted. Ofra's Honolulu was less red and muted. And Too Faced's Melted Chocolate Cherries was more red and glossy. The Rabbit is a medium to dark brightened fuchsia pink with blue iridescent shift, cool undertones, and a satin finish. I honestly felt like this shade had a slight transparency to it, despite it being very richly pigmented. It had great coverage and that kind of transparency wasn't noticeable, since the vivid color and that iridescent violet shift really tends to hide that. It really is a very eye-catching, more unique shade. And of course, the formula applied very evenly and didn't bleed or feather or feel drying. The Rabbit lasted eight and a half hours and left behind a stain. In comparison, Max What's Going On was similar but glossy. Urban Decay's Firebird was similar but warmer. And Kat Von D's Sexer was lighter, cooler, and more blue. Tulips is a medium to dark muted brown with hints of maroon, cool undertones, and a satin finish. Once again, for being a darker, more bold shade, it was very easy to create clean, crisp edges during application. It had great opaque pigmentation that sat very evenly and wore nicely on lips over time. Tulips lasted eight and a half hours and left behind a stain. In comparison, ColourPop's Teeny Tiny was lighter and warmer. Max Stone was lighter, 
warmer, and muted. And Ofra's Honolulu was darker, warmer, and more burgundy. So overall, ColourPop really did nail this formula. They truly are incredible lipsticks. While they don't dry to a completely transfer-proof finish, if you like the idea behind a long-wearing, highly pigmented lip color, but you find the regular liquid to matte lipsticks to be overly drying and uncomfortable on lips, then without doubt, I can almost guarantee that you will become a fan of these and you will like this formula. While the ultra matte liquid lipsticks can be a little troublesome and uncomfortable and they kind of give your lips that cling wrap look and feel. The Ultra Satin Lipsticks from ColourPop are almost one of my favorite formulas out there. They're a really, really great lipstick, so of course with that said, I do recommend trying these out. So be sure to let me know in the comments below if you've tried this lipstick formula, if you are planning to, or just in general what your opinion on the liquid to matte lipstick trend is. Do you think it's going to be dying out anytime soon? Because I think it's almost safe to say that it's going to be around forever. But if these satin type finishes are thrown into that category, then I'm kind of okay with it. As always, don't forget to check out my blog for more details, photos, and swatches, as well as like, comment, and subscribe to show your support. If you'd like to give me a follow, I will have all of my social media listed here, as well as down in the description. As I always say, I hope you found this review helpful, and I hope that you're having a fantastic day, and thank you so much for watching.